Here are 20 common mistakes beginners make in mid-journey. Number one, being afraid of parameters. There are a bunch of different parameters in mid-journey, but you only need to know a few of them. Dash dash AR changes the aspect ratio of the image. Dash dash chaos decides how varied the results will be. Dash dash Q impacts the quality of the render. And dash dash S influences how artistic your image will be. Those are the four main parameters in mid-journey. Memorize them and you're already ahead of 99% of people. Number two, not understanding the seed. The seed is a randomly generated number that decides how your image looks. So if you use the same seed, you'll get very similar images. Getting the seed is very simple. Just react with the envelope emoji and the mid-journey bot will DM you the seed. Number three, asking for text. Midjourney is amazing at a lot of things, but text is not one of them. If you want to put text into an image, you're much better off generating it without text and then using Photoshop or Canva to add it later. Number four, blindly copying others. Whenever you see an image you like and you want to try the prompt for yourself, make sure to actually analyze the words in the prompt. If you're just blindly copying prompts from other people, you'll never learn anything. Instead, try to figure out what makes the prompt work? How is each word impacting the resulting image? Start doing this and your rate of improvement will instantly 10x. Number five, neglecting the slash describe command. A lot of people don't know that this command even exists, which is truly a shame since it allows you to see images through Midjourney's eyes. Simply type slash describe and select a photo. Midjourney will then give you four different descriptions of how it sees that image. This command will build your understanding of what Midjourney actually sees, which is absolutely essential if you want to make the most out of this wonderful AI. Number six, using the same prompts over and over again. This is bad for several reasons. First, you won't become better if you never leave your comfort zone. It's very easy to stick to one art style or one type of subject. You see this all the time with people who only make images of girls. I don't know about you, but I would much rather see something unique something creative than yet another chick. Experimenting is crucial if you want to master mid-journey. Try using new words, try different subjects and styles. Don't just do what everybody else is doing. Number seven, never trying version four. Mid-journey currently has five different versions, all of which will give you vastly different results. However, you can basically ignore the first three as they are widely considered to be obsolete. The latest version is mid-journey five, which is what most people use. However, V4 is also really good and in some situations it's even better than V5. So try using version 4 from time to time, you won't regret it. Number 8. Being afraid to take inspiration from others. Flat out copying other people is bad, but there is nothing wrong with taking inspiration. Famous singers do it, famous DJs do it and famous painters do it, so you should probably do it too. Inspiration is literally a superpower when it comes to creating art. It can help you get out of a rut, it can make you try new styles and most importantly, it can show you what's actually possible with Midjourney. Number nine, staying in the newbie chats. The first place people go to when trying Midjourney is the official Discord server, specifically the newcomer rooms. There is nothing wrong with starting this way, but unless you want to be a newbie forever, you should start your own server. It literally takes two minutes and it will allow you to have all of your creations in one place. To take this to the next level, I recommend creating dedicated channels for each art type. For example, you can have one channel for people, one channel for animals, one for buildings, you get the point. Number 10, not turning on remix mode. Using mid-journey without remix mode is like using a laptop without a mouse. You can do it, but why? Remix mode allows you to edit your prompt when making variations. This gives you so much more control. You can change the parameters, model versions, aspect ratios, or even the entire prompt. Remix will take the composition of the starting image and use it as a part of the new job. This is especially helpful if you're trying to achieve something tricky, something that involves a lot of detail and complexity. Just type slash settings and click on the remix mode button and voila, you've unlocked the powers of the remix. Let's say you generate an image with the following prompt, line art, stack of pumpkins. But then you make a variation from that image, changing the prompt to pile of cartoon owls. Midjourney will generate that variation with the influence of the original image. Number 11. 
changing the prompt too much. Whenever you feel like you're almost there with your image and still want to make some changes, the worst thing you can do is changing the prompt too much. This might seem obvious, but you would be surprised how many people do this. The closer you are to creating the exact picture you envision, the smaller the changes you make should be. Just change a single word or tweak one parameter. Don't redo the entire prompt. That will just result in a totally different output. Number 12. Only using Midjourney. I feel like 99% of Midjourney users are guilty of this. Believe it or not, there are other image generating AIs out there. Now you're probably thinking, why would I use other software when Midjourney is the best? And I agree with you. However, using different AI models like Stable Diffusion or DALI will teach you new things. Things that you will never discover if you only use Midjourney. Stable Diffusion will show you the importance of negative prompts. While in Midjourney you rarely see people using them, in Stable Diffusion negative prompts are absolutely essential. Also in Midjourney you can create pretty good images even if you're a beginner. However that's not gonna happen in Stable Diffusion. And as far as DALI goes, I myself use it for extending images to the side. Honestly I have no idea if this is the best way to do it. So if you have any suggestions let me know. Number 13. Typing too fast. Now hear me out because this is much worse than you think. When you're typing super fast you're much more likely to make mistakes and a single typo can completely mess up your prompt. The other day I wanted to make an image of a lazy man lying on a couch but instead of a couch I typed coach which gave me something totally different. Not only does this waste your fast hours but you're also generating useless images that you never wanted in the first place. So make sure to type slowly and carefully thinking through each and every word. Number 14 not using weights and I don't mean the weights at the gym although you should start using those too. I'm talking about prompt weights. When you're working with a complicated prompt that has different objects you can give more weight to a particular object by using double colon followed by a number. The higher the number the more priority Midjourney gives that word. For instance, if you do forest fire, you'll get exactly what you would expect. However, if you put double colon two after fire, the result will be much more fiery than the previous one. So if you have a prompt that's already pretty good, but you want to highlight a specific word or phrase, just give it a higher prompt weight and see what Midjourney comes up with. Number 15, lacking the learning mindset. How much do you know about photography? How many famous artists can you name? What are some lighting styles that exist. Do you know any camera lenses? Knowing those things would greatly improve your mid-journey images. Now obviously you don't have to know everything and I'm not expecting you to but by simply understanding the basics you'll get 90% of the benefit. Look up some famous photographers, research a few popular art styles, memorize a couple of grain painters. It's not that hard. The vast majority of people are scared of learning something new because we all hate the feeling of sucking but it's required if you want to become better not just in mid-journey but in life too number 16 not describing enough beginners have a tendency to write super short prompts and then they are surprised why the image doesn't look exactly how they envisioned let me share a little secret with you mid-journey can't read your thoughts at least not yet we might get there soon but for now you have to use words to clearly describe what you want using short prompts works decently with version 4. However, from what I've seen, version 5 performs much better with more information. And you don't have to overthink this. Just tell Midjourney whether you want a photo, a painting, a 3D model. Describe what the background should look like. Use some adjectives. The main issue with short prompts is that they will always result in images that look more generic. That's because you're forcing Midjourney to rely on its training data. But making your prompts more detailed and specific will give you images that are way more unique. Number 17. Super long prompts. We've established why short prompts aren't optimal. However, neither are prompts that are ultra long. If you know what you're doing, you can definitely create some amazing art using very long prompts. But if you don't have tens of thousands of generated jobs under your belt, you should avoid long prompts. The reason is simple. When you're a beginner, you won't understand most of the words in those prompts anyway. Now look, if your goal is to test and experiment how each new word impacts the image then by all means try some words that you don't fully know but whenever you're trying to go for something specific stay away from words you don't understand number 18 not using negative prompts most of the time you'll do just fine without them but there are situations in which telling mid journey what you don't want can be very helpful to 
To use a negative prompt, just type dash dash no and the thing you want to exclude. For example, you might want a group of insects with no bees or a traffic jam with no motorcycles. For images like these, it's good to have negative prompts in your arsenal. Number 19, using vague language. To generate better images, you want to be using more visual and descriptive language. Avoid vague terms like nice image or good lighting. Those terms don't mean anything. You want to learn to think and write how a photographer or an artist would. Start using phrases such as intricate, melancholic, elegant, vibrant, enchanting. There are countless words that fall into this category. But before you can use them, you need to know they exist. Number 20. Unrealistic expectations. Mid-journey isn't perfect and neither are you. So be patient. You need thousands and thousands of generations under your belt before you become an expert. The best mid-journey users out there have generated tens of thousands of images. It takes time to become great at this. But if you stick with it, you will become an amazing mid-journey artist. If you've learned anything from this video then please subscribe it takes two seconds